Hi guys, it's Mozzie and welcome to episode 1 of season 4 of The Impossible Dream with Vala Town, and welcome to the professional era here at Vala Town. Today we are going to be playing an Estonian team in the first qualifying round of the Champions League, but given that it's a new season, there's episode 1 and there might be new people joining us, and if you are welcome, don't forget to subscribe and of course hit the like button as well. I thought we'd have a quick rundown of where we are as a club. We're a professional team now anyway, it's probably something we should look to do. Just turned professional this past off-season, so it's very, very exciting times here. You can see, obviously, we're the manager. Our captain is still Anthony Glennon. Uh, good leadership skills, good teamwork. He'll remain captain for the foreseeable future, I think. Um, he's doing a decent job. Henry Jones is our vice-captain. Um, still waiting on him to sign a professional contract. Is he going to... Difficult to make him uh, vice captain when he's not only there half the time, but there we go. Our key player and defending player of the season is Reese Williams, our defender we signed from Liverpool. Um, absolute star he is as well. And our, our hot prospect is Connor Gosney, uh, a really, really talented young centre back, could play right back as well uh, that we have signed. And he is, we're currently in negotiations with him to turn professional. Uh, we're trying to wear him down slowly. So there we go. This is kind of where we are at as a club. If we look at the general information screen, um, we don't have any icons or legends yet, but we do have a little congregation here of our players and myself that are favoured personnel. Of course, Reese Williams, Bus and Brew, who should have been goal, uh, player of the season last season, our top goal scorer for the last two or three seasons. And Denny Gosset, who I think we all have a, a soft spot for, is a favoured personnel as well. Facilities, we are currently in the process of upgrading our training and youth facilities. Uh, if we have a look at Club Vision here, they will be done. The, uh, club, the actual the sort of senior training facilities will be done the 14th of October. The kids, uh, the youth will be done uh, the 6th of, uh, of August, so a lot sooner. So that, that's almost there for the start of the season. Um, so exciting times with that. And of course, we did get uh, upgrade from nothing to poor diagnosis facilities. Uh, we might look to upgrade that again when we get the chance. And of course, junior coaching youth recruitment is good and adequate. We'll look to go again on that. I think we'll probably have to wait for the facilities to upgrade for that to sort of become available again. Long-term goal, I would like to get our stadium, uh, Maz Tegged up to a point where we can play our home games in Europe at, at, at our home ground, whether it be here or the Aussie Villain Arena. I really want the Aussie Villain Arena. Um, but that's a little ways off yet because our average attendance is, we'll have a look at um, that, that in just a second. It's nowhere near enough yet. But competitions. We have won three Welsh Premier Leagues the last three seasons. So that has all been us. We've won one of two uh, Welsh Cups and we did win that League Cup as well. So we've had good times since we took over. If we're going to have a look at the records, club records, um, obviously highest league position is now first. Most points in a season, 82, which we didn't do last season, but the season before that we fell just short last year, a few too many draws. That is something I'd like to try and break this year in terms of a record. Uh, most wins in a season, 26. We did that our first season. We tend to draw a few too many games uh, of recent times, but I'd like to see if we, that's a record that we could uh, break our own record in that sense. Um, we don't really want to do fewest wins uh, or most league defeats. We'll leave those records. They can stay there. Um, this record I have uh, targeted as well. Most league goals in a season, 81. I'd like to think we could maybe get to that this year. You never know. Uh, so that's a, that's, a, that's a goal that we will target. Highest attendance is... Uh, well, this time last year, of course, we had played AEK Athens in Europe in the first qualifying Champions League round and won, newbies. Um, we, that, that was really good. It was really, really good. I wish we could go back and do that again, actually. But it was our highest attendance. Uh, lowest attendance, 45 people showed up for a Welsh League Cup tie between against Kef and Druids. So there we go. Biggest win, 7-0. We didn't do that. What we did do, though, is the highest scoring match. We had a 7-1 in the, in the Welsh Cup, so the Welsh FA Cup third round. Um... So that's maybe a record we could target as well as to get the biggest win. Highest scoring match of 4-3 against Barrytown. That was a good game, if I remember correctly. Um, so there we go. Transfers. This is probably getting behind my head, so you may not be able to see this. Uh, but Reese Williams was our highest transfer fee paid at £21,500 from Liverpool. Uh, our biggest received fee is just under three grand for Alex Bray, who was a bit of a disaster, and he's now a free agent again. So it wasn't just us. <laughs> uh, and total transfer spending in our time at the club, we've spent £500 above what we spent for, for Reese Williams, basically. So it's Reese Williams, and that's about it. Player records. Most league goals by a player, Lee Hunt, 67. Now, I make Luke Bussenbrew at f about 45 goals, I think, when I added it up before. 40-something, 40 43, maybe. I can't remember. Uh, 9 plus 25 is 33 plus 50, 30, 48, I think. 
So in theory, it, you know, a 20 goal league season from Boston Brew, which he's done before, and he could end this season as the all time sort of leading uh, league goal scorer for the club. So let's hope that happens. Ashley Morris is the appearance record holder. Now, we did have him first season. We let him go. I don't think anybody, maybe Denny Gosset could be close-ish, but I don't think anybody is going to be getting close to that for a while. Um, you can see most league goals there to play uh, Boston Brew 24 in a season. Highest match average rating was James Waite last season. Youngest player was Damian Allmark, uh, one of the youngsters that came through our academy. Um, of course, named after the Patreon supporter. If you would like to have a, a Youth Academy product named after you, link from a Patreon in the, in the description. You can see what you need to do for that. Oldest player was Valentine, who's moved on. And we've got nobody near that age uh, now, so that record could stand. Fastest goal, we hit 16 seconds with Alec Muddy move back in the Welsh League Cup uh, two seasons ago. Boston Brew, four goals in a match is the record. His stunning effort to get us into the uh, Europa Conference group stages last year. His four goals against our Icelandic opposition. Hat-trick, Mike Hayes' hat-trick is still the record. Uh, for most goals in the league. We haven't had a four-goal four goal haul in the league yet. Most assists in a season was Denny Gosset's stunning 20-assist season. That was back in the first year as well, wasn't it? Louis Gray last season broke the most clean sheet records with 25. Gosset, most men of the matches. That was uh, two seasons ago uh, with eight. Youngest goal scorer again was Damien Ormark. Oldest goal scorer was Chris Venables, our, of course, esteemed youth manager these days, under-19s youth manager. He's going again on these coaching. I think we've got him again another coaching badge, so... He'll continue to improve, and I think we might have a decent coach there in the end. Um, but let's hope so anyway. Sequences. Uh, most matches won in a row was 13. Um, being in Europe's really going to make that tough for us for a few seasons here. Um, we don't want to go... matches. Oh, matches without losing was 21. Um, and that was two seasons ago now, wasn't it? So that's roughly where we stand as a club. Finances are looking relatively good, as you would imagine, having gone so far in Europe last year. Four million in the bank is a lot of money for a Welsh uh, club. Um, and like I say, we'll be looking to invest that back into facilities now that we have turned professional. Transfer market, there was a transfer special last episode, but there wasn't too much in terms of permanent signings that we made. Um, what we did do is we, we got a couple of guys in permanently um, that had been on loan with us. So James Waite is now a full-time professional at Barla Town, as is, of course, Joe Lewis, who we signed from Swansea. Um, we did loan in George Ratcliffe. Uh, to sort of be a competition at goalkeeper. And of course, Gareth, no, Ilian Ap Gareth, we signed so that he can't play against us anymore. We've locked him away in a prison. Um, but injuries will probably mean he needs to play for us. But there we go. Um, the main thing we did this past off season was just, because we were turning professional, was just get everybody over onto professional contracts. Uh, and now we'll kind of wait and see where we, where we go from there in terms of signing players. Um, but this is it. Let's get the Champions League football underway for the season. We are heavy, heavy favourites against our Estonian opposition here. As you can to get early on in the, in the qualifying, we're playing smaller teams and we don't really know much about them. They did beat... They are... are they, they're um, San Marino, aren't they? No, Endora. I had a guess of two and I got it wrong. <laughs> um, but we are not necessarily expecting a 4-4-2. Uh, Kat and Nacho, we're expecting them to sit back. I don't know if that's how they're going to come out against us, but... We'll just kind of wait and see. Um, this is the team we're sending out, though. Our first team in the professional era. And it's a little bit of a mismatch, to be honest. We don't want Ratcliffe in goal, though. So it's going to be Louis Gray, the goalkeeper for this one. Signed the full-time contract. Let's hope that he uh, he can do the job for us here. Glennon has to go at left back because we don't yet really have options at left back. Uh, it's going to be Joe Lewis, Williams, and Nichols as a back four. Just a reminder that Bakari, our usual right back, injured two to six weeks with strained knee ligaments. So he is missing for the start of Europe. Vieira and Parsons go in midfield. For those of us who don't or will get an upgrade of their update, sorry, of their uh, progress, we can see their Vieira uh, and we can see their Parsons as well, both on professional contracts now. We're expecting big things. Serafino goes on the right because we we don't really have anybody there just now. <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. James Waite is going to play in the middle uh, and Neto, again, we did end up keeping him on a full-time contract. He is going to go down the left and bust and brew. Goal scoring supreme. Not really adapting to professional football how I would have liked. What is this, Mr. Bus and Brew? Unbelievable. He's going to go up top. We are going to have a go at them. Hopefully it won't backfire. We are at home. We want to try and keep a clean sheet if we can. And here we go. And they have sprung a little bit of a surprise. I did not expect to see that formation. Now, are we a little bit... Do we need a DM? Oh... I don't know what to do with that now. What we don't want to be doing is conceding silly away goals, do we? Um... Lewin says, uh, courage your players, give him a bit of a morale boost. Um, uh, and it's all, okay, let's give the fans a performance. Some calm, we have faith. 
And suddenly I'm really, really nervous about this. I was not expecting that formation. So here we go. Now one thing that uh, I did want to quickly update you on is last season's goal of the season. At the time of recording, it is split 50-50 and Vieira's injured. It is split 50-50 between Bust and Brew's goal against RZ and Backhill Benny's goal. Uh, spe oh, do we want Backhill Benny on the field, maybe? Um, and Backhill Benny's goal as well. So if you haven't yet voted, it's Season 3, Episode 15. Go and make sure you vote. It's, as I said, 50-50 right now. It could not be any closer. Do we want Backhill Benny or do we want a more defensively minded Owen Taylor on the field? Um, let's go with Backhill Benny. Doesn't have the best uh, history in Europe, of course, does the old back heel, but let's hope, let's hope that that's all behind him. He's a professional player now. We're all professional players. I don't, I honestly really don't know what to expect from being a professional club. I don't know if we're going to see an instant improvement. Um, one thing we do have is the ability to train, which is good. So we've been able to put in a sort of a proper preseason this year, which is excellent. Um, you may notice uh, match condition is quite poor. That's basically because I forgot to arrange friendlies pre-season. I forgot. I wasn't even thinking that. I was too busy trying to get players to turn professional. Uh, here we go with Wait. There for Glennon. Nice little ball for Neto. Can he pull it back for Bus and Brew? It's there. It is there. It's back. It's Oh, it's away. It's a good clearance, to be fair, to the defender there. We're camped outside their penalty area, though, right now. Neto. That's not... I think... Was there a block on that pass? Oh, he's pounced. Neto, like a cat. It's back post. Oh, it's a good save from their goalkeeper. Serafino, so unlucky. A highlight continues almost immediately. Neto, Neto with the header. And Neto, come on, mate. You're a professional now. You've got to stick that away. We've seen Neto score goals like that before as well, which is really, really frustrating. We're dominating the game, which is good. What we don't want to do, back here, Benny's looking nervous. It's European football. It just doesn't agree with him, does it? Um, what we don't want to do is is obviously start conceding goals. We'll wait till after this highlight. Possibly a demand more shout is in, is in order here. Here we go with wait back for Glennon. Glennon, decent ball in. It's there for Bust and Brew. It's Wait. It's, oh, it's head. Oh, it's bouncing around. Wait, James Wait sticks away. His first goal as a professional Barla Town player. It's the first goal in the professional era at Barla Town. And it's new boy, James Wait. He's on just under a grand and a half a week. <laughs> a lot of money for us. But he's just begun to pay it back there. A little bit of luck. It was sort of ricocheting around. It wasn't, or maybe Bust and Brew meant that. The, the defender cleared it into his mate's face. Ricocheted down to James Wait. And James Wait. Gives us the lead. Excellent stuff. And long may that continue. Let's give it a demand more anyway. See if we can go kick on here and get a second goal. Bus and Bruce feeling pressure wise. We do have Ap Gareth on the bench. Um, a very, very uh, ballsy call by uh, Groundhopper. Player of the season this year, Ap Gareth. Big, big call. Early, okay, so let's call it. First uh, game of the season here. Who does everybody think will finish the season as... Um, as player of the year. I think maybe you've played well. There's room for improvement. I've got to be honest. I would say I can't see past Bus and Brew, But given that. What's his face? When it, Reese Williams won it last year. Having. Less, I mean been second fiddle to Bus and Brew basically. Who was just an absolute star. In front of goal for us. I find it very very difficult. To, to, to look past. Uh, to look past Reese Williams for player of the season. But. You know, we'll see. We'll see where that comes out. But it means to see what you guys think. James Waite could be a decent shout now that he's a he's a sort of actually a, a Barla Town player. Will the fans take to him now? Possibly. Uh, let's show some passion here, boys. Come on. I don't. We haven't seen much from them. I I I tend to think one nil here wouldn't be the worst result for us to take away with us. Um, we will do both legs today, uh, just in case you're wondering as well. Find out who we get in the next round. Probably Legia Warsaw. Um, though there is a chance it could be Shemrock Rovers. Um, all right, it's not really working out for us this second half. So let's give Ap Gareth a debut. Uh, get Serafino off, who hasn't really done it for us there. Um, backhill Benny is... Uh, do we want to leave a nervous Backhill Benny up there? That's the big question, isn't it? Uh, and I'm thinking, Boston Brew not had a great date. Let's get it pressing forward. Damien Allmark on in, in Europe and see what he can do for us. Um... We're looking motivated. Let's see if we can give it one more demand more. I'd really like to see if we could get a second goal here, but I'd rather 1-0 than 1-1. So we're not going to go at them too hard here. A little bit disappointing, I'll be honest. A scrappy goal from James Waite, but we do take a lead away to Estonia with us. And it was it was, it was just James Waite, wasn't it? It was just Neto and Waite. Uh, we got away with one there, boys. That wasn't really good enough. 
So Bala secure victory at the race course ground. Vieira's injury is relatively serious, so that's a nice early season setback for us, isn't it? Um, one thing to remember is that it is our is our first competitive game of the season. We will be better for that. Um, but it was a little bit disappointing, I've got to be honest. Guys, wait right there, we'll be back for the second leg. Can we progress? I really hope we can. Okay, welcome back for the second leg. We are the favourites for this one. Um, but yeah, well, I mean... We should be better for that first game. Now, a couple of things to catch you up on. First thing is affiliate clubs. So if we go to Club Info and Affiliates, we don't have, as yet, any, I would say, proper affiliates. What we do have is we have two local amateur teams. Uh, the problem is that we can't really loan our full-time professionals, or even if the youngsters are part-time, some of the older ones. Um, we can't loan them to an amateur team and expect them to develop. So I've asked the board to find us another uh, another affiliate club. They're looking to do so right now. I've asked for a senior one as well, and they, they can't find any um, they can't find any suitable clubs. So we'll keep asking for that. Um, ideally, I'd like Cardiff or Swansea City to be honest, but it's not happening right now. So that's that. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing, but it kind of is what it is. The other thing, and I want you guys' suggestion on this, is what do we do with on oh, oh, got another guy alone here, Jordan uh, Garrick. Looking to fill in that right wing spot. Just came in on trial. Potentially he could be quite good. Uh, who's he wanted by here? By Chesterfield. So that's probably roughly the level we're at. Potentially he could be quite good. I'm just, saying, I'm just waiting. We'll play him in a friendly. I'm thinking he could be a decent enough option. Got, it looks like he's got good physicals. He can dribble and cross more or less. So he's probably the best we've found so far. Wages will be the big thing with him I think. But the thing I want your guys uh, feedback on here is James Chester. Now, he is a Welsh international. He's played in the Premier League before. It's, it's that James Chester. Um, here's the thing. He's, okay, so his staff attributes are absolutely rubbish. So we don't necessarily want him for that. What I'm thinking is, would he be a useful player with these sort of mental attributes to come in and would he do a job as um, sort of like as a mentor? And I think he would. Now, the problem that we have is that if we go to sign him, he, he will only join as a star player. He just won't do anything else. I've tried, trust me, on that. He will only come as a star player. 12-month contract, £500 a week. A part of me thinks there's not really too much to lose there, except that we would have to play him, probably just in league games, but we would have to play him, which means that if we go to do this by position, I say it was Reese Williams and Ch uh, James Chester. That's what I'm thinking would be the, the, the main two guys. But it would mean game time taken away from the likes of Dan Evans, who could be quite good for us. Connor Gosney, who could be quite good for us. Obviously, we know Joe Lewis is already a bit of a star. And um, and Glennon, if we if and when we get a proper left back in as well, would want to play centre back. So we're kind of signing someone into a position of strength. Now, could James Chester play as a left or right back? He could, kind of. He doesn't, he doesn't have the pace. He can't cross or dribble. So I'm thinking he'd be a body more than a player, if you know what I mean. Um, so I'm a little bit torn what to do. With, uh, with James Chester. Do we look to sign him and just use him as a mentor, but then he wants to be a star player? What we don't want him is to become unhappy, and then that's a whole other issue. So I'm kind of torn what to do. Is it a sort of a short-term gain for a long-term loss in not giving game time to Evans and Gosney? Or would they benefit more from having him here as a mentor for a season? So I'm not really sure what to do with that one. I'll throw it open to the class. Uh, but here we go. We are off to Estonia. Now, we do have a scouting report from our last... Well, not a scouting report. A data analysis report from our last uh, game. This is how they played. I don't know if this is how they're going to play again. It really caught me off guard. Um, but we did okay. They were quite narrow, as we can see there. They sort of attacked across the field relatively evenly. Didn't pass it out from the back. Centre-backs looked to get most things started. Um, and we can see there, no key passes and a few mistakes as well. So we're basically going to go with the same team. Just uh, one change, obviously, for the injury. So Gray continues in goal. Glennon, Lewis, uh, Williams, and Nichols as the back four. Backhill Benny comes in. He was nervous last time, but he is a very talented player in this position as a deep line player. Good first touch, uh, good decision making, decent passing, great vision, good technique. We need to give him game time. Uh, so he's going to play with Connor Parsons. Serafino just keeps his spot on the right ahead of uh, Apgara. It's James Wade and Neto. Bus and Brew up top. Let's see if we can do it. Can we get into the next round? So they've changed things up again. This we should match up a little bit better against, to be honest. We're pretty much going sort of the same formation as them. Um, give them a morale boost. We should be winning this one. Do I want to say that? I really... First leg means nothing now. Make sure you win this one. There we go. Look at that motivation. It's a professional team talk there from professional manager now. Uh, all right. Let's get out there. You want me to try and sell it? The stadium's empty. The locals aren't even interested. 
Hi, I'm Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist here at the Lakula Stadium in Estonia, where we are just moments away from the glamour tie of Champions League qualifying as Welsh giants Bala Town look to hold on to their 1 0 first leg lead as they face local side Lavidia. Who needs Manchester City and sold out stadiums when we have this? I'm Chaz Hogan, somewhere east of Germany. Good, I hope they can bloody hear me over the crowd. I wonder if I could say now, guys, I want a professional performance from you. <laughs> Instead of a, not, not, none of this semi-professional rubbish we've had the last few years. I want a professional performance. Um, but there we go. I am still obviously looking for players. Uh, we're sort of scouting. What I don't want to do, the transfer window still has a long time to go. Neto with a floated ball in. It's missed. Joe Lewis will pick it up. Ball back there for backheel Benny. What's he going to do? Takes a bit of time. No backheels, please, mate. <laughs> James Waite. Backheel Benny. Parsons. Backheel Benny. It's there for Neto. He's on the wrong side on his left foot. He can't quite. He keeps it in play, though, and it goes out. Um, what I don't want to do is sort of sign the first players that come along uh, and then have better ones come out later because we're still a long time to go in the transfer window. They're, we're in no hurry, really, other than to get players in for Europe. And now that we've registered the initial squad, we, can't, we can only make one or two changes per round anyway. Oh, it's just over the bar from Joe Lewis. So signing a bunch of players now doesn't really change that much. Um, what we don't want to do is go back on level terms here, please, boys. Seaman with the cross in. Oh, dear, that is an unmarked man. We might need to uh, just have a quick look at, uh, at working on defending set pieces for next time. Here we go, James Waite. Ball in. It looks good. It's headed towards goal. Luke Bussenbrew with the goal in Europe. His first of the season. And that's the away goal. And that... Should just about see us through the tie, I would hope. They need to score three now, and I'd like to think um, that we're good enough not to concede three goals to a uh, Estonian team. Excellent stuff. Good ball in. Good header by Bus and Brew, and we're away. Was it offside? I mean, it wasn't, but... Oh, tell you what, is that Bus and Brew? He's only just, isn't he? I don't know where this guy at the back post was, but... Bus and Brew's toenail looked offside, and we've seen VAR give those recently, haven't we? Here, right, here we go again. We've told him to show some passions. Parsons with a ball in. It's a Calvin copy. It's Reese Williams this time. He gets his first goal of the season. Wait, Bus and Brew and Williams. It's like a who's who of Barla Town, and they've got the goals that are now going to see us through to the next round. Now, are we going to be playing Legia Warsaw, or are we going to be playing Shenrock Rovers? That is the big one, isn't it? If we can get through that... Essentially, what we would have done then is guaranteed ourselves uh, Europa Conference group stage football. And again, a reminder, we need to win two ties to guarantee ourselves in the group stage. Neto now, and Neto, that is horrible goalkeeping, but Alder Neto gets his first of the season. James Waite with another assist, and you can see now we are definitely looking the better for that first run out, uh, aren't we, in, the, in that first leg. We were a little bit poor in that one, as I have an itchy eye. I think I have a cat hair stuck in my eye again. Um, great ball in from James Waite, wasn't it? Really good to have eyelash. I don't know, there's something in my eye. Uh, yeah, really good to have James Waite here on a permanent deal, isn't it? Um, one thing we could look to do now is perhaps look to rest some players. Uh, I'm relatively confident they're not scoring five goals in this second half. Um, don't get complacent, boys. Things can turn around quickly. We won't say it assertively. We'll just give it a nice, calm... I trust you, boys. You're professional now. Let's get this job done. Uh, what was I saying? No idea. Oh, yeah, resting players. We might look to, to maybe make a few changes because we, we are still trying to get minutes into players' legs as well. Uh, we are playing friendlies on the weekend. So, the, obviously, these games are midweek. We're playing weekend friendlies. So, the guys that aren't playing in the in the, in Europe are playing sort of in, in friendlies. So, that hopefully, everybody's game time will, will sort of come up together and we'll get sort of match sharp as a squad. Obviously, training full-time helps that as well. Good ball there to get Neto in. Neto, it's headed away. Bus and Brew can't get on the end of it. But this is going to be picked up by Nichols. Nichols with a decent ball forward there. Serafino with a finish. And Francesco Serafino. Get in, son. He hasn't broken his leg in preseason this year. Look at how excited he is. And I really, I really, really hope we see big things from Serafino this year. He's a five-star potential player. He's a professional player now as well. And I really, really hope that... He can stay injury-free this year. We can really get a look at, at what we can expect from Serafino if he plays plays regularly, trains regularly, um, and sort of kicks on. We're what? I mean, we've got a little bit of time to go here. So, okay, so let's make some changes. Let's give Boston Brew a rest. We'll get Damien Allmark on, get him some European football. Um, I think I want to give Callum Watts a game for Parsons. 
Um, Parsons is an important player for us, but he's sort of he's done his work. Um, all right, go attacking, spoil yourself. And do we want to do Owen Taylor, who is a good young potential player, useful player perhaps? Um, let's keep a sub. Or do we want to do Gosney? Let's keep a sub up our sleeves just in case. Um, yeah, I'm wondering maybe if we want to give Gosney a game. Potentially, Gosney is a star for us, or is potentially Owen Taylor's of a useful uh, sort of bench player. So. I think we probably want to get the star involved, don't we, more than the bench player. I think Reese Williams has done his work. Uh, let's give him a rest and get Gosney on to partner Lewis. Lewis needs the game time as well, so that works on two levels. Come on, boys. Can we get another goal? It's been a much, much better second leg performance. In the end, we've cruised it. Um, we've looked quite comfortable. Allmark hasn't really shown much up top, which is a little bit disappointing, but he's still young. He's still learning. But there we go. We get into the hat for the next round. Now, the question, of course, is I'm very pleased with that, but don't let that performance go to your heads. So there we go. We get through, and the big question is, who do we get? Is it here somewhere that I haven't seen? We get we get Legia Warsaw. Now, of course, they knocked us out of the Europa League qualifying last year. A chance for revenge this year. Looks like we're away from home first leg. Uh, they have players. I had Kieran Clark. Well, there we go. Um... Anybody else there we recognize name-wise? Dominic Nagy, he was, uh, is he, yeah, he was at the Euros a couple of years ago, I think, wasn't he? Uh, Cafu, still chucking around, he must be 50 by now. Kevin, oh, this guy, he's from, uh, he was at Dortmund for a while, wasn't he? He's a good player as well, so they, they're a good team. Um, so this is not going to be very easy for us, but they only beat, was it 2-1 in both legs they won last year, so there is, there is a hope. Um, well done to James Waite, and... We've got some friendlies cancelled. Guys, that is it for today's episode. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do we do with James Chester? Is he worth signing? And we'll be back next time for Legia Warsaw Home and Away. Can we guarantee ourselves group stage football in a European competition, then just decide which one? Or will Legia Warsaw get the best of us again? We'll find out next time, guys. I've been Ozzy Thank you so much for watching. Take care.